Hey, now it's Anthony with ANA Professional Services. And before we get into this video, go ahead and join the New Wave Facebook group. All right, let's get right into it. We're going to talk about the three different customers. You got three types. And any customer that you may have should fall under these three types of customers. Uh, for the most part. But... The first customer you got is your price customer. And I call them a price customer is because they are, everything is based on the price. Doesn't matter about the quality. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you're gonna do, what service. Every, their decision will be based on the price. They're very cheap and they don't usually wanna pay a lot of money. Uh, they're going to range anywhere from like the 20 to like $60 mark. And $60 is probably where they're going to stop. And the $60 range is probably going to be, you know, a large vehicle. That's probably where they're stop. They're not going to go past that. That customer will always keep you busy and keep your stress level up. This type of customer may not pay you on time. You send them an invoice. You know, they'll, they'll pay it in a couple of days or they'll let it linger. And these are the worst customers to deal with. You don't want these customers because they'll make it a living hell for you. Uh, but a lot of us had to deal with these customers in the beginning simply because we needed the work. Uh, ignorance uh, didn't know any other way. Again, these customers want a whole lot for nothing. And with these customers, you got to turn out a high volume. You're going to have to work a lot with these customers. So for you to make a, have a good payday, uh, bring in some good income, you're going to have to turn over high volume, which means you're going to have to do a lot of cars. A lot of these cars are going to be dirty, which you won't be able to do it within an hour, within 45 minutes. You won't be able to do it in that time frame because it's just too dirty. And I remember when I did a group wash, I had a lot of those type of customers. And I remember when I came in, I was at like 20 bucks. I think I did like 20 for cars, 30 for trucks and SUVs. And what ended up happening was I was just getting a lot of filthy vehicles. So maybe like the third time I went up there, I kind of put a disclaimer in there. And I was like, well, uh, if, the, if heavily sold cluttered vehicles will be charged an additional fee. And again, like I said, I went up $5 and that eliminated a lot. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to get rid of these customers. All you have to do is raise the price. You can raise it five, 10, 20 bucks, and that's, I mean, they're gone uh, because everything, again, is based on price. The next customer you have is the researcher. I call them like the researcher. They're not, they're not really cheap. They may come off that way. They typically research prices. They research your packages. They read it, and they compare it to other detailers and you know, just like sometimes you get that phone call and they'll say, I'll call you back. You know, I'm just checking prices. You know, what they're doing is just calling de different details and see and trying to find an average price. Once they find that average price, they're not going to go above that price. They're going to stay within that price range. So if the price is 200 bucks for full detail, they may not go over 220, 230. And if it's way low, then they're going to think something's wrong with it. Uh, you can deal with these customers. Uh, they're not picky, uh, but the thing about them is they want to make sure that they're getting a fair price. Uh, and these customers are, are good to deal with. Uh, you can make a good living dealing with these customers. Uh, the only thing is, is, again, if you raise your prices, you may lose them because they have done their research and they know what it costs in the area. So they will go and just go to somebody else now if you build a rapport with them and they trust you and you're doing a good job you may be able to keep these customers then my favorite customer is you got the high-end customer which they always want your best package they want your best package they don't even ask how much it is until after the service they typically like to tip big and the good thing about these customers they have a lot of friends that are just like them they're competitive. Uh, that's why they make the big bucks, but they're super competitive in everything. Sports, work, uh, family, everything. Uh, so when you go out to their neighborhood and you're doing their car, if their neighbor have a car that's similar or 
you know, maybe he has a, a, a Lamborghini and the other one has a Corvette or one has a McLaren and they always buying cars and trying to, you know, show up one another. If they see that you're over there, they're going to, you know, hey, you know, they're going to try to get your attention, get a car, see how much it costs and they're going to want to get theirs done. Uh, and sometimes people just don't, those type of people just don't want to be left out. Sometimes it's not competition. It's like, well, I mean, if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. And it's great because they all tip big. And with these guys is that they'll tip you what the price that the, you know, the cheap customer, when I call them the price customer, wants to pay. So if the price customer wants to pay 50 and $60, that's usually what uh, the high-end customer will tip you. And these are the customers you want. These are customers that I that I try to find. Um, and once you get into those nice gated communities, once you get to those areas, you want to stick around. Especially if you don't have a lot going on that day, you want to stick around and put on the show, pull out the phone cannon. You know, if you're going to be applying wax, apply with a polisher. You know, do a lot. You know, and and they were like, wow, he's he's really getting the works done in their car. How much a service like that costs? And, you know, you throw them the price and then they just be like, they don't even flinch. And that's if they ask you the price before, because like I said, the majority of the time, they're asking for the price after the service. All right. Those are the three type of customers that I've experienced. Uh, so I hope y'all can learn something from this. I sure did. And... I'll see y'all in the future. Shouts out to the new wave. Peace.